What's up guys, this is Scott Harms with Performance Therapies. I'm a physical therapist and a strength and conditioning coach. Um, fortunately, I've been blessed enough to work with many runners over the years of all skill levels, whether it be high school runners, college level runners, or even recreational runners. Seeing different levels, the high level runner and the low level runner has given me a great appreciation for what really makes a good running stride and what, what makes up a good runner. One thing that I frequently work with runners on and want to share with you is just the concept of owning the start and owning the finish. Owning the start can take a, take a lot of meetings. For one, in your upcoming season, we want to be ready and own the start of our season. So if we're going to own the start of our season, we have to be prepared both mentally and physically going into the season. So make sure you're getting to work now to prepare your body so that you're ready to run and start training at a high level when coach gets a hold of you. Don't wait. Get to work. Start building your strength. Start building some endurance so you're ready to go. So own the start to your season. Also, own the start to every race. That means prepare yourself mentally so you're focused and you're sharp and you're ready to, to hit the ground running as soon as that gun goes off. And own yourself physically, so be ready physically. Uh, make sure your mobility is ready. Make sure you've done a few drills to kind of fine tune your form and be ready to go when you hit that start line. Owning the finish, first of all, you can't own the finish if you didn't own the start so make sure you own that start secondly we're going to talk a little bit later about owning the finished position in your running form because that's going to be what propels you forward in your in your gait cycle but also own the finish in your season your the, the goal for all of you is to be better at the end of the year than at the beginning of the year so make sure you work hard all year so whether your goal is to win that state title to make the state, the state meet, or maybe just to be a better athlete at the end of the season. Make sure you're working hard throughout the year so you can own and finish strong. When it comes to a race, you guys know what it means to finish strong. Just make sure you ha have a left in the tank and give it all you have so you have nothing left after you own the finish. Lastly, we're going to kind of talk about owning the start and owning the finish in your running form which is kind of where I tend to work with, with runners a little bit more. So what I mean by that is owning the start, our gait cycle starts when we hit the ground. So we need to be really efficient in the muscles that absorb that load. When we hit the ground, our body compresses into the ground and the ground hits us back and we need to be able to transfer that energy into a forward movement. So when I hit, when I hit the ground at foot strike, I've got to be really solid in the muscles that absorb that energy and then transfer that energy forward. So we're going to give you a couple drills here to work on owning the start of your running form, owning that impact position. So the, the muscle groups that we really focus on owning that impact position are going to be our hip stabilizers and our, and our quads and our core a little bit. Um, but, but most importantly, those hip stabilizers and the quads. When we tend to falter, what happens as we hit the ground, the system buckles somewhere. A lot of times it's that knee buckling inward and the arch caving in in the foot, or sometimes it's the core kind of buckling and my pelvis coming forward or getting in front of me. So if my core buckles as I come here, my hips come forward a little bit, and my body's moving back, which doesn't make a very efficient stride back forward. So we need to make sure we're solid in our hip and our core, and then lastly, strong in our quad. So I'm gonna give you a couple drills that you can work on. First, to be solid in the hip and the core, and then second, to develop that quad. So we're gonna take a little mini band. We're gonna put that around both knees here. I usually like to put it somewhere near the knee, either just above or just below the knee so that that band is gonna to try to pull our knee inward and we're working to really not let that cave in or not, not let that lower half collapse. So what we're gonna do is kind of get in a stance position, kind of like our impact position, um, weight through our midfoot, body over top of that foot, and then we're gonna to try to really stabilize that. So the goal is not to let the knee or the hip cave a little bit. So, if that knee and hip cave, we're not, very, we're not as strong and efficient as we need to be. So we're just gonna hold this balance position in the, in, at our impact position and work on just trying to reach the other leg out to the side. 
as I reach that other leg out to the side, that knee's trying to, that band's trying to pull my knee inward. I'm working pretty hard through my, through my glutes to stabilize that. My core has to be engaged so that my body doesn't start to lean one way or another. So ideally my shoulders stay level the whole time. I don't want to see this start to happen. Then I'm using the wrong muscles. So that's the first drill. A little band, single leg balance with band reaches. You could also vary the direction of the reach to make it a little bit more challenging. Second drill we're going to go over. It's going to work a little bit more on our quads. You do a lot of, hopefully you're doing a lot of these things in the weight room already. Um, but I'm just going to show you one variation. There's a lot of good things that can work on this. Squats, lunges, step ups, a lot of different things. But we're going to work today on, um, just a, we're going to work on a step back lunge with a kettlebell. So. Um, I'm, I'm, I like that kettlebell in front because it really, it's trying to pull me forward, trying to break my core, but I'm not going to let it. So as we hold that kettlebell, two focuses, staying tall with our pelvis kind of tucked in underneath of us and then not letting that knee cave in. So I'm just going to step back. Remember, we're working on this weight acceptance, not letting that front leg buckle and then coming back up. So we're just here. To here really focused on accepting our body weight at impact so as I step back I don't want to put all my weight on that back leg we're focused on the front leg like I said before a lot of different exercises can work on that Your strength and conditioning coach will help you help you in the weight room with that as well squats lunges step ups all of those things working on the quads to absorb that load load so those are a couple great exercises to work on owning the start position, owning that impact position so that you can then finish. So now let's, let's go how we're going to own the finish position, okay? So the finish in our running stride is going to have two main components. As we transfer that energy back forward, one component is the, the hip drive or hip extension, which was really powered by our glutes. The other component is the leg drive of the forward leg coming up and through. So we're going to go over by the wall here to kind of work on a drill first for that. So basically we're going to come up, we're going to get in a nice forward lean at the wall so that we have some body weight going through. We should feel like we're doing a plank, feel our core a little bit engaged. And then we're going to, in this position, we're going to work on that hip extension that I talked about. So really making sure this glute's working as I drive my other leg forward. So I want to feel my left glute tight, my core solid, like I'm trying to push the wall over here, push through the ground, push that wall over. And we're just going to kind of do some pauses at first and just feeling getting that good drive. I'm trying to push my back leg into the ground as hard as I can. The better we get a good push off, the further we can get in, in the air on each stride, the less time we spend on the ground, the more efficient we're going to be. Now, as I do that, I'm also focusing on my leg drive. As this leg comes up, I want to make sure I'm driving it straight up and through and getting some good height there. As I stride, if I get a good leg drive forward, I get further in, through the air and I don't have to work as much through my lower half. So if I get that good forward leg drive coupled with that push off, now we have, we create, we cover more ground per stride, which is gonna help us be faster, whether we're a sprinter or whether we're a long distance runner. So, so we can make that a little bit more challenging or add a little speed to that by just working a one, two, three and hold. So as we hold that position, then we feel that glute on the back and back to the, the opposite side. So that's kind of a wall plank with a leg drive. Second drill to own the finish. We're going to work on a step up. So I'm going to use the kettlebell again. You could use dumbbells at your side. You could do a goblet hold. You can do all sorts of variations, but we're going to just stick with the kettlebell. Uh, maybe I'll hold it at the side this time for a variation, but as I hold it at the side, got to keep my shoulders level. I don't want that to collapse. So 
maintain that posture. That core is really important. But now we're going to kind of focus on that leg drive, trying to get that good hip extension, and then get the opposite leg driving through. So we're just stepping up to here, controlling it back down, driving through the box, and back down. Again, I'm really focused on my drive, trying to strengthen my quads and my glute so I can push off a little bit better in my running form. So can take that a little step further, add a little speed to it, and just make it a single leg drive. Coming here. So again, working on that leg drive. The last thing that is really good to own that, to work on that finish position, you, should, you probably do every day in your warm up or even just in uh, your running form work. So that's gonna be skips, just our A skip which will really focus on that leg drive coming forward, making sure we maintain a nice tall posture with a good solid core, driving that front leg up and through, getting that good stability as we drive through. Secondly is bounding. Bounding is gonna be great to really develop that hip extension and that leg drive here. So as I bound, I'm really working on trying to develop that spring and that push off. The better push off we get, the faster we're gonna be able to go. So there's some good drills for you to get ready for the upcoming season. Make sure you own the start to your season, make sure you own the start to each race, and make sure you own the start to each stride in your running form. If you own the start, you'll be ready to own the finish. If you own the start and own the finish, probably what happens in between is gonna, gonna go pretty well for you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. Reach out if you have any issues in the upcoming season. Thanks a lot.